If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another sewing tutorial. Today I am happy to sew along with you, and I hope I say this right, the Anukis Bag by Sakarton Patterns. OMG. First, let me show you a tour of this bag before we get into the guts of the bag. So, you can see it is a, a circle bag. It is a birth circle bag. It is not bound, which is so unusual to find in a circle bag. It is the perfect, perfect bag to showcase a print or a panel like I've done here. Um, this is piping. I made my own vinyl piping for this one. Um, there are, you can use multiple fabrics in your overlays here. On the back, you have a vinyl overlay with a zipper pocket and more decorative piping and two different panels again. It is a recessed zipper. And the pattern has uh, two slip pockets. I did my standard slip pocket and zipper pocket like I do in all the linings of my bags. Um, things I did different with this one, so that I don't show in this tutorial, is once you have the bag all made, you the pattern calls for putting in metal uh, bridge connectors right here that go through all of the layers. I did not have those, so I went ahead and I did hidden connectors in the sides. Um, if you choose to do the hidden connectors, uh, you would do it at the point that I do them in the pattern. And if you're doing the bridge connectors or the metal connectors, then you would do them as per the pattern once everything is all made. Another thing I did differently was this is birthed through an opening in the bottom of the lining, which I did do, but I also left an opening in the bottom of this exterior zipper pocket. That way I could pull that lining through the zipper pocket and sew up that opening. In the pattern, she has you fold in the raw edges and top stitch that shut, and that works perfectly fine too. But in this video, I show you my way. So I left an opening in the exterior zipper pocket. I did not leave an opening in the interior zipper pocket. Again, the interior zipper pocket isn't in the pattern. That is just something I added in. What else, what else, what else? Oh, and I didn't make my strap removable. Now in the materials uh, at the beginning of the video, I show that I used uh, D-rings and, um, and swivel clasps. Uh, I opted halfway through not to do that. I wanted to make it so my crossbody strap stays on, so I substituted in my rectangular rings, took out the D-rings, and took out the swivel clasps. So you can definitely do either or. Um, another thing I forgot to mention when we get into it is I didn't uh, say that you need a metal zipper end. So yes, add that in when you see the materials list there. Besides that, I pretty much followed the pattern to a T. Let's talk about materials in this bag. Okay, so let's start first with this accent panel. I have had this in my stash, I swear, for two years, maybe three years. I got it from So Pretty Vinyls. And as of this date, February 2024, I double checked with Tanya and she does still have a few of these in stock and she will be reordering them. Her shop should be reopening here pretty quick. I will link down below where, um, her website again she has been closed for a a while due to her home burning down but as of february 2024 uh she was saying that she should be open here shortly within the next week or two so you'll be able to get this panel it was the perfect size for this bag now my top metallic -y vinyl here and my main vinyl on the back as well as the gray side of my double strap oh i did do my strap slightly different too i did a double-sided strap but you can do the straps however you like. Um, this is uh, the Rex Metallic. I don't remember what the color name is, but it's from Emmeline Bags. It's the gray one. Um, this glitter vinyl here is from Galaxy Customs. This shiny kind of patent, whatever, 
shimmer vinyl. This was from Galaxy Customs as well. I'm not sure if you can still get this. I think this might have been a one-time buy, but I'm not 100% sure. As was, I made my own piping out of the shimmer vinyl, which is the same family as this one from Galaxy Customs. My piping cord I used in this is from Cal Galaxy Customs. I believe it's the 5 16th piping cord. I do not show you how to make the piping in this tutorial, um, but I do have a class in the Bag Makers Basics playlist uh, for how to make piping, which I do have linked down below in the description. Um, my zippers and zipper pulls are from a Blue Kala. The rest of my hardware is all from Emmeline bags. Uh, interfacing in this bag, um, what did it, the lining I backed with a medium woven interfacing. I used EB Fuse Light, which is an Emmeline bags uh, uh, material or interfacing similar to SF 101 my exteriors I, it is foam I did use the pretty and pink so foam from galaxy customs which is my utmost favorite foam to use of all time it just gives such great structure to the bag and is completely domestic machine friendly um what else oh I did edge paint with Giardini edge paint which you can buy from MLM bags because here don't be scared of this piping because it's done very very it's not your typical way of doing piping which most of her patterns do it this way which is really cool but all along each of these overlays right where the piping sits is a raw edge so i did a giardini edge paint all of those you don't have to the piping kind of hides that raw edge um i did edge paint all of my uh, zipper overlays as well again i used uh i think i used three coats of base coat a coat of color and a coat of protecting gloss on top for that um Again, I do have a class on how I like to do my edge painting and down below in the description. Hmm, I think that's everything I need to mention. Um, if while watching this video at any time you uh, find it helpful or you like it, please do give me a thumbs up and please do subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, how about we get to making this bag? I'm gonna need some rivets, number five zipper tape, some piping if you're making your piping, slider, two swivel clasps, two D-rings, three zipper pulls, your nameplate, and also a zipper end. These are my strap pieces. I'm doing double-sided straps, your piping pieces, your connector pieces, if you're doing hitting connectors like me, your exterior side pieces, all of your front and back overlays, which I have already edge coated all the raw edges with Giardini edge paint, your slip pocket piece, your front and back main panels. Now I'm adding an extra zipper pocket, but these are all of my zipper pocket pieces. Your lining side pieces and the lining top side pieces. your lining top and lining bottom pieces, and foam. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do my double-sided strap off camera. If you need a class on how to do that, they're down below in the description. Okay, I also am gonna make my own piping. If you are making your own piping, you need a class. Again, I have another one down in the description. Okay, so now, as I said, I edge coated all of the center curvy parts of my um, overlay pieces. So I'm working with my front pieces first. And along that center curve mark where I have done my edge paint, I'm going to use some double-sided tape on the wrong side of this first overlay. And then I'm going to take my piping piece. And I'm going to line it up, kind of covering up the stitching of my piping like so. Now you're going to see your piping isn't going to want to go around that curve. So to get past that, go ahead and put small snips into the seam allowance of your piping like so. And that'll help make it so you can spread that fabric out nice and evenly around those curves to get a nice and perfect fit. Now it's very important when you're sticking this to the overlay piece that you are making it so the piping 
goes along the shape of the overlay and not that you're trying to shape your overlay to the piping. So make the piping curve around that curve. Stick her down. Again, I kind of made sure it was going over the basting stitches of my piping. Trim your piping off like so. And then what we want to do is once we have that stuck in place, we want to measure in about an inch or so of each of the sides of our piping. And then you want to kind of open up your piping fabric within that inch. I just pulled out my basting stitches to reveal the piping corning on the inside. You would do the same if you're using pre-made piping as well. Pull it back kind of like so and trim away some of that cording by about an inch or so. And this is so we're not sewing through that when we go to sew these to the bag. So you will do that for both sides just like so. Go ahead and do that with your other two front overlay pieces. Okay, so now what we wanna do is you wanna find your top center of the top overlay piece. Now this is hard when you're doing a circular bag. You really gotta make sure your centers are accurate so your bag isn't lopsided. So we're gonna take the top one, match up that top center, and you are going to stick this down and around. Again, I've used some double-sided tape to help along that raw edge as well as clips it just makes it so it's not going to move so stick it down with the tape clip in place for the first one now for the left side here again i've used some double-sided tape just down the the middle of it just to help hold it in place and this one you're going to kind of lift up that one that we put on already because this one we want to slide under that left hand piece like so and then follow the curve around using clips as well as sticking that tape in place the tape really helps because we're not actually sewing these in place until we go to do the final top stitching here momentarily Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we are, after I put some clips in, we're going to do a similar thing with the right hand overlay, but this one is going to go under that bottom overlay or the left overlay and over the top overlay. So match up kind of where those little pokey parts are of the circles on top, like so and bring it down and around. Again, this one is gonna go underneath my pink overlay there. And then bring this one back down and once you have everything looking good, secure everything with clips. You will find that that right overlay doesn't match up along the bottom edge, which is good. That's so we don't keep sewing through our uh, piping there. So follow the pattern instructions and you'll get perfect placement. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch from here all the way down to here, kind of go underneath this overlay, break your thread and then start top stitching here to here, go underneath the top overlay and then same here and then just get as close as you can underneath that right one. Switching into your zipper foot will help you get nice and close to your piping at this point. So I've changed into my right zipper foot. Okay, again, starting on that right hand side, we're going to top stitch down right along the overlay where it meets the piping. You can see how that right zipper foot makes it so our center part of our zipper foot goes nice and snug against that piping. I've pulled back my pink overlay here so I can go underneath and do my back stitch, break my thread, put that one back in place, and do the same with the next overlay. Ok, 
Okay, so now when we get to this last top overlay piece, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start your top stitch, but because we can't move the overlay on the opposite side out of the way because we've already sewn it down, we're just going to kind of, when you'll see when we get there, pull it back as tight as we can to get our foot underneath the piping to do our back stitch so it doesn't show. So I'm just kind of slightly pulling it back like so. You can see how I'm doing that there. Back stitch and then cut your thread. Doesn't she look pretty? Okay, you can go ahead and remove all of those clips. And now we're gonna reduce some of the bulk, especially if you're using vinyl and on a domestic, you'll wanna do this. So you're just gonna pull back. This was that main panel. So we're just gonna kind of pull it back and cut it out of the seam allowance. So now it's made those overlay pieces part of the main panel. And this just makes it so you're not sewing through multiple layers of vinyl unnecessarily. So it definitely reduces that bulk. So go ahead and trim those back. Okay, you can go on ahead and trim off any little wings that may be hanging out there. And that is the front panel, pretty much complete. Okay, so now for our back panel, you're gonna take your back panel overlay pieces, put them right sides together, and then you're gonna sew through there with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, open up that seam, and then top stitch down either both sides of that seam. Okay, so that's what that looks like done. Now you're gonna go ahead and put your piping along that center curve just like we did with the front panel. Okay, so make sure you have your top and bottom centers marked. I've done the double-sided tape thing here to help me hold this in place. I'm gonna match up that center seam with my bottom center clip marks, just like so. Stick it down in place. Secure with clips. And just like we did with the front, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to top stitch along where the piping is. So that's all done. You can go ahead and you can trim off the little wings that we have right here from the piping, as well as go ahead and trim off the vinyl that we do not need along the back here to reduce some of that bulk. Next, we're gonna take our side panels. We're gonna put them right sides together, line up the longer sides of the bottoms. Go ahead and sew through here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Open up that seam and top stitch through either side of that seam. Go ahead, you can change back into your regular foot here for now.
Go ahead and take all three of your finished exterior pieces and back them with foam. Now one thing I've done is on my gusset pieces, I've kept the foam an inch away from the top of each of the sides of the gusset. And on our main panels, we're gonna use our pattern piece, so kind of where the pointy part is on our pattern to the marked line. On the back side, you can see the little mark on our pattern piece here. And you can see where it kind of has little corners on the top of our circle. So on the back side, we're just gonna kind of do marks from there and where that corner piece is right there. And we're just gonna cut the foam back by about a three quarters of an inch or so uh, to help reduce the bulk when it comes to sewing those gussets and um, main panels together. Just It'll just help really reduce the bulk within those seams. So go ahead and do that on all four sides of these. Okay, so there we go. This is what that looks like. I've also gone ahead and I put my nameplate in nice and centered along the top. Now I chose to do hidden connectors here rather than the metal connectors. If you need a class on how I do that, it's down below in the description. Okay, so now we want to work on our back pocket. So I have gone ahead and I've just kind of cut out the curvy part on the pattern piece here um, as my guide for my overlay placement. I'm going to line my pattern piece down and I'm just going to trace that out with an erasable pen like so. Flip it over and do the same on the other side. Then I'm going to take my overlay and I'm going to use some double sided tape along the top straight edges. And yeah, and the bottom straight edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line this up nice and centered and straight in between those marks. And then I'm going to continue to install my zipper pocket with overlay. If you need a class on how to do that, I do have that down below in the description. I will be doing my lining zipper pocket in the exact same fashion. So go ahead and install your zipper pocket with overlay, leaving the bottom of that zipper pocket lining open for turning later on. Okay, so now on our exterior pieces, between where that little pointy part is and where that mark is that the pattern piece has, we just wanna kinda of make it so we round this off. So go ahead and trim those little kind of pointy parts off to round it off. Okay, now what we want to do, again, I washed away my mark there. So again, make sure those marks as per the pattern piece are on there. I'm going to match up the bottom of my gusset side pieces with the bottom of my main panel. Put a couple clips. Bring up the side so it matches up with that mark we made with our erasable pen, like so. A couple clips to hold in place. Do the same with the opposite side. And now what we're going to do is in between those third sections, we're going to go ahead and we are going to evenly distribute the fabric in between those marks. Now what you're going to notice is our straight edged uh, side gusset pieces here do not want to go around the curve. So we're going to put in little eighth of an inch snips like so all the way around that curve. And what that's going to do is it's going to help spread the fabric out to make it more of a rounded piece so it fits around that curve as you can see like so. Now make sure you don't go over an eighth of an inch because we are using a very slight seam allowance with this pattern of only a quarter of an inch. You do not want those slips slits to go too deep into that seam allowance. So eighth of an inch is perfect. So you're going to go ahead, use lots of clips here to hold in place, do the exact same thing with the opposite side. Once you have it all clipped together, again, you can see I'm no stranger to clips. You do not want this to slip. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sew around there with a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
Once that's done, go ahead and run your fingers down that seam to make sure everything was caught. If it was, go ahead and do the exact same thing with the opposite side. Once both sides are on, go ahead and turn this exterior right sides out, pressing out all of those seams really, really good. Go ahead and you can put the exterior aside for now. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our zipper. So on the wrong side of our zipper, on the right-hand side, I'm just gonna draw a line like so. That's gonna help us put the zipper pull on nice and straight later on. On the opposite side with the right side facing up, you're gonna take your zipper tape and you're gonna, gonna fold it upon itself, pinch and fold, and on a 90 degree angle here and hold in place with a few pins. My hands do not want to work here, as you can see. And then you're gonna go ahead and baste that in place. Once that's done, go ahead and trim off the wings that you have created there, and you can pull your zipper teeth apart. Now we have our bottom uh, lining panels. I've already gone ahead and I've done my pockets the way I do them. There's classes on how I do them down below in the description. You do not need to leave an opening in your pocket lining because we are going to be turning it through the exterior uh, pocket lining. On the side with the zipper pocket or the whichever you want to be the back, I've done a one inch line in from each of the sides. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape. You can use clips here if you prefer as well. I'm going, so my lining piece is a right side up. My zipper with the curvy part going towards the left is also right side up and I'm going to stick that down just in between those lines. Kind of pull your tail down and out of the way this way because we do not want that tail to get caught in our stitching. Now you're gonna take your lining top piece, find your top and bottom center. Again, very important, you have accurate top and bottom centers in a circle bag. Along that bottom straight edge, I'm gonna once again use some more double-sided tape. You're more than welcome again to use clips. Just knowing the sensitivities of your machine is very important whether you use double-sided tape or not. And what we're gonna do here is bring these right sides together, matching up that center, and clipping or sticking this down, sandwiching that zipper tape, again, making sure that the tail after that one inch mark is kind of down and out. Now go ahead and sew across here, flip it up, and then you're gonna sew underneath the zipper tape with the uh, zipper pointing up, top stitch through the lining. Changing into your zipper fit here is really gonna help you get nice and close to that zipper. You'll repeat all of these steps with the opposite lining panels. The only difference will be that your curvy side of your zipper will be going to the right rather than the left. So this is both panels done, and you can see when you put them right sides together, your zipper should match up nicely. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our lining side gusset bottom, whatever they're called pieces. You're gonna take the top gusset pieces here, and you're gonna find your top and bottom centers. You're gonna take this right sides together with our side pieces, stitch through there with a quarter of an inch, and then top stitch that seam in place through the lining panel. Once 
once that's complete, go ahead and bring the bottoms together, right sides together like this, and go ahead and sew through there with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I just pressed my seam open. Now what we want to do, similar to what we did with the exterior, is on our top piece here we do have a mark where we will be lining up our gusset. Now one thing you will notice when you go to line up your gussets, the gusset top panels will not line up with your uh, bot or your lining top panels. We want the gusset top panels to kind of go down below so that you will not see the lining once the bag is all sewn together. So do not try to match up where the vinyl and the vinyl meets. You will find that your side uh, top panel pieces will be longer than our main body top panel pieces. So go ahead and clip these in place exactly how we did with the exterior um, piece when we went to put it on. Make sure your tail is out of the way for your zipper because you do not want it to be caught in that stitching. Once clipped in place, what we're gonna do is to about here, we're gonna go in with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, branch out to a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then come back up to a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the opposite side. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the other side, except for we're gonna leave a good size hole for turning. So this is what that looks like. We have our hole in the bottom of the lining for turning. Now we're gonna take our exterior, which is right side out, our lining which is wrong side out and we are going to stuff the exterior into the lining making sure you are putting uh, whichever side of the lining you want to be with the back and whichever side you want to be with the front you're going to match up the top centers of the linings and exteriors like so with a few clips do the same with the opposite side again I like to work in quarter sections I just find it helps evenly distribute that fabric uh, nice and even you're going to do the same with the sides. You're going to kind of, I actually learned you want to push your seams for the um, gussets here towards the center of the gusset for both the exterior and the linings to get a nice and seamless line here. Um, it'll want to fall that way. Coco says, hi everybody. Hold that with clips, matching up those side gussets, pointing towards the gusset side. This is another reason why we cut the foam out of our where our gussets meet here. It just helps reduce that bulk because it is a very, very tight corner that we're working here. Again, do not open up your seams like I'm doing. I learned to end up just pushing them towards the center rather than fighting them. Do the same with the opposite side. Making sure your zipper tail is still hanging out down inside because we do not want to accidentally catch that in. Once you have those quarter sections all secured, you're going to go ahead and you're going to evenly distribute the fabric in between those quarter sections, making sure there are no tucks or nips or anything like that so we will have a nice and straight sew. Once again, I'm not a stranger to clips. So if I was on my flatbed, I would go ahead and I would sew along the inside of the bag like so. But I'm gonna go ahead on my cylinder arm, do it through the top, and you do the same thing on a free arm machine.
Go ahead, check, make sure all seams were caught, and if it all looks good, go ahead and turn it through the opening in the bottom of the bag. I am wishing I left my opening just slightly bigger, so you could have done it just a little bit larger to make this turn a little bit easier. I am using vinyl, so it is a little bit of a tight turn here. Once you get it turned out, make sure you're pushing that seam we just sewn all of, I'm just running my finger right along that seam to make it nice and taut, making sure my exterior seams are all poked out the way we want them to be. Once you get that seam pretty much poked out that we had just sewn, you can go ahead and you can stuff the lining into the bag. And then you're gonna take that seam that we had just sewn and you're gonna kind of roll it in between your fingers and secure it with clips to prepare for top stitching. all ready to go you're going to top stitch top stitch this in the same fashion that we sewed it together either through the inside of the bag or through the exterior of the bag Top stitching is all done. If it looks good, now we can go ahead and close up that opening in the bottom. So this is a brandy thing. This isn't in the pattern. Through that zipper pocket on the back of the bag, reach in through the opening and pull out the entire lining of the bag. Go ahead and clip. My mat is moving all over the place. <laughs> go ahead and match up the center and clip in that opening that we left along that one side of the gusset. This just makes for a nice and seamless bottom of our bag because you will not see the seam um, once we have this all sewn. So clip all the way from where your stitching started and stopped and go ahead and sew across there with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you're done that, push it back inside the bag, take a peek in, make sure there are no gaps, it looks good. You can go ahead and fold in the raw edges of your zipper pocket, fold them under, clip these in place, and then you will top stitch your zipper pocket shut. This will leave kind of like a little bit of a seam, but it's in the zipper pocket. Nobody's going to know. Stuff that zipper pocket back in. Nice and flat. 
And then all you have left to do now is to install your, match up those lines on the back of the zipper tape to get a nice straight zipper pull. Trim up that tail, put on your zipper end, put on uh, your uh, straps or clip them on. This is also the point where you would be putting on your metal uh, bridge connectors or strap connectors if you're doing that way, just like the pattern. Admire your work. Make sure the zipper and everything works, no holes. Pat yourself on the back. This is actually a fairly fast sew, not too hard. And we're done. And that's it, that's all. What'd you think of this? Fun sew, not a hard sew. I think the hardest part was probably the top stitching, but mainly because it's a smaller opening. Super easy if you have a free arm or a cylinder arm, but not impossible on a flat bit either. Just top stitch from the inside of the bag and you should be fine. Um, yeah, anyways. If you did like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel further, you can definitely buy me a coffee. That's all linked down below. Check out the membership side in case there's something there that interests you. And until the next one, I'll see you guys again. Bye.